definitely had a few problems. It was pretty hard for the defenders. This one's gotten a lot better for the defenders. Right off the bat, we see Father's back banning out the Maverick. So that's pretty common on this bomb site or on this map as well. Ash gone from Dark Zero. What? Interesting. Talk about that. What? I didn't see it. I didn't see Ash really get played in the last map. Uh, not really. If there was a lot of Ash play, it was on Dark Zero side much more than uh, than Father's back side. So that's um. Maybe they just don't want to show their ban on Clubhouse? Perhaps. I don't know. That's a wild one. But we lose the Ash, we lose the Maverick, we lose the Mirror, and we lose the Echo. So Defender bans follow suit from Consulate over to Clubhouse. The Attacker bans completely in a different ballpark. Nonetheless, it'll be Father's Back electing to start on the defensive side. Dark Zero are going to be starting on the attack, so maybe we can see some fight back here from the Japanese team. Totally. Um... One thing as well, like this is one, some maps are very balanced in the 50 50. Um, even when we say a map is like defender sided, it's not that crazy. We're talking like 55 to like most, I think it's 60 ever that we really see. Yeah. Um, but so this map, we're saying it's pretty defender sided, somewhere in the high 50s. Uh, we would say that it goes towards the defenders more often than not. It depends a lot on the teams that are playing, right? It depends on the play styles more so than anything. Defenders Here on Clubhouse, it's still going to be an advantage. It's still going to talk to the fathers back, but it's not the end, uh, end of the world if they go down early on the defense. They can still pull it back in the attack. It's going to be a little bit tougher, though. So I got scared there for a minute in op pick phase because <laughs> Mint uh, had Blitz selected. And uh, we all know what happens with Mint and Blitz on this map. So That's a classic. <laughs> that is a classic. And uh, thankfully, he swapped over to the Habana because they only had one Hard Breacher. So now double stacking the Hard Breachers, Hotten on the Thermite, Mint on the Habana. Next, bringing a Capital. It's often a, an operator that's banned on this map as well mm -hmm. and made it through because of whatever the hell that Ash ban was. So <laughs> yes. there's going to be a lot of attacking operators right now. I mean, that's another point as well that I, I completely overlooked. Dark Zero starting on the attack, right? Yeah. Why ban something that can help you True. win on the uh, on the poorer side? Obviously, that'll come back to haunt you when you have to go to your defenses. It's double-sided coin there. But uh, for right now, you want to start off well and take away the advantage from Father's Back that they inherently have by defending on Clubhouse first. Then, mm. Yeah, ban an operator you're not going to use. Yeah, I definitely, it's a great point, right? The uh, off bands coming out being definitely more defender-sided, or attacker-sided, excuse me, where uh, good attackers didn't really get banned out. I say good, I mean, Ash is fine, but uh, the key attackers, like, as you mentioned, uh, Kapatau or a Hard Breacher, as well as Maverick uh, not getting taken off the board. That's a big deal, right? So the attacker's gonna be a little bit stronger. Interesting to see who comes out on top. Wow, Nyx just missing the frag. His teammate Hyper will pick up the first one on the Apple, and he gets shot in the back, so he doesn't even manage to find anything. Kakatari comes in and finishes him off after he'd fallen to the ground. That's two kills in the first minute of the game. So we asked for some more aggression. There it is. A roaming smoke is about peak aggression <laughs> I can think of, and uh, he's gonna be, Kakatari was roaming over in strip, and I guess Dark Zero missed droning. I had no idea. He also had the Cade of, uh, of B-Sun over by uh, Jacuzzi Wall. He took about uh, 40 health off and Mint as well with the TCSG. So, actually, I think he's got the AUG, uh, which does not have the damage buff yet. Um, so for right now, I mean, hey, different mindset. They lose Apple in the process, so it's a trade, but you get rid of the Capital. There's your smokes. There's your fire bolts. You can play a little comfier on site now. Oh, yeah, you take that trade, 100%. Yep. Um, you can't bandit trick is the thing, but, like, your bandit battery still likely were up, especially if you're trying to go aggressive such as that uh, play. So, yeah, a really great trade coming out for Father's back. You still see something starting to get opened up, but the fact that you're only using a bandit means that you can't uh, stop those hatches being opened up, right? Oh, sorry, there's a cave. What am I saying? Thank you, Observer. Uh, yeah, b on that's going to be able to stop those uh, hatches from blopping up and uh, blowing up. What am I talking about? But didn't seem to work. Looks like they're able to open up those hatches. Now they can look through the floorboards, try to get some more kills. Playing a lot of a vertical game here for Dark Zero. BC's taking a little bit of damage as well. His fire up from the floor was able to catch him on a, uh, a kitchen floor peak. He's also firing back down. Trying to get the default camera hyper. Looking to push him towards blue in a moment. It sounds like the AUG of the Kaid of B-Sun rattling off from him behind the generator inside of blue. Still looking to uh, possibly open up the, the church wall here with the Habana X Kairos for Dark Zero. The execute again taking a little long, but now Mint is just going to stroll on into church. No one Hello. covering from blue. Good night, B-Sun. It's a freebie for Mint. Up against the wall, being stacked up now, being pressured by the 416, but Mint with another one. Kakatari leads with able to trade one back. Kenki as well, so down to a 2v2. Being pressure from Moto. A lot of shots on, but not enough to down off Houghton, who carries the diffuser. Needs to rotate in and join Mint for a plant. There's 10 seconds left. The smoke will come up from the hallway and Kakatari with three on the round now and it's a four bang the Kakatari roaming smoke and father's back able to take the defense on round number one 
That's a round I really didn't think that they were going to come out on top of. It's the It's been a bit of a theme across both maps now that Father's Back sometimes have trouble watching every angle into the bomb site. We've seen a couple of times now in that last round, and I can think back to when they were defending Cafeteria Garage, right? Hyper just kind of sneaks in the back lines and nobody really notices. DZ have done a great job uh, so far this game in getting in without necessarily being noticed and getting some free frags from that. But man, Kakatari, huge on the smoke. The SMG 11 coming in very useful for him in that round. Um, excellent work by him to be able to pull that one back and really single-handedly almost give it to Father's Back. So up to Cash and CCTV we go for Father's Back as they look to uh, continue Defenders this, uh, protect your bombs from being by this defensive streak that they can hopefully run up and, and grab some momentum and uh, turn the tides of this matchup. It's constantly looked like they weren't, uh, weren't having much of a grip on either side of the game other than their attacking of the basement. Now here on Clubhouse, they're successful downstairs. Like I said, we're looking for a little bit of a uh, mental shift here for Father's Back. Roaming smoke is, is about as far as you can possibly go on a, uh, a mental shift. Three assists there for Kenki as well with the Legion Mines. And Dark Zero there, time was the enemy. And a missed drone as well. A smoke yeah. grip. That, that usually doesn't get by. Maybe uh, Dark Zero taking a little bit of a breather after uh, feeling a little bit easy after last game or last map, sorry. But for right now, they got to refocus and make sure they're not making any mistakes. Both maps now, the opening round, will go to the Japanese. Um, and I, I think it's great to mention that the drone work wasn't all there for DZ. I thought that, that was one of their stronger points in the last map. So a little complacent, perhaps, in this one. Uh, I would, wouldn't be surprised if we never see that again, right? Yeah, that's something that you can easily correct. And you like, guys, we got to drone stuff. And we, we expect them to play more passively, because that's how they were in the last map. Well, they're adjusting. We got to counter adjust. And so I'm not super worried for, Father, er, for Dark Zero. They lost one. Still definitely come back from this. A long range arrow coming out from Nyx. Trying to clear some people out of that uh, area up there, perhaps. Surprising also that that wasn't uh, blocked off by Attackers something. Have located a bomb. Looks like a uh, very well practiced Capital Firebolt coming Perfect. out from, uh, from Nyx. And down. that'll allow them to open up the walls. Good news is you've got the CCTV wall opened up, and you've also been able to EMP and dispatch of an evil eye. Droning now coming out onto Apple as he's roaming on the master side as the Jaeger. He's already got his utility down, so just trying to be an off-site presence and hold down some control on the far side. We've seen a lot of different implementations of the take to CCTV and cache. Some teams will opt strictly just for a wall take. Some teams will do wall and garage. Some teams will do garage and construction, Bomb wall and construction. There's a bunch of different... Uh, tactics and it looks like for right now flies back spreading out a lot more than they were on consulate just trying to hold down everything at the same time with presence in master gym construction and site explosions going off again they open that uh cctv wall very very early they don't uh, have anybody pushing through just yet. Mintz has found somebody who's trying to push him it's another aggressive roamer coming up from father's back they really want to pump it up more so than they did on that last map, maybe going back to Valencia vibes and uh, pull things forward. It worked for them the last time. No, I don't want to get too aggressive though, right? I mean, you see Mince inside here, you take that engagement, he knows you're there now. That's fine, just back off. You've put some fear into his eyes and you've maybe done your job already. Hyper looking inside, and that's that wall that I was talking about earlier. They're looking in, they're looking to be able to find somebody who's maybe not in the best of positions, but Father's back have been good, right? They're playing behind the reinforcements, they're playing behind the hard walls. And Dark Zero struggling to find an entry point. Done a good amount of work to be able to strike some fear to the hearts of Dark Zero as the site execution yet has even to form as Impact Tricking coming down from below. The missed shots there from Mint will also be the demise of his uh, ex Kairos pellets. It was Tanky who was downstairs inside of the bar. Capital Fireball coming out from Nyx, but as he detonates that, beautiful shots there with the TCSG. Mint on the trade, a team kill coming out from Dustal Box as running straight into the site will be BC. One member down out of the balcony and Mint on one HP, but it's a 1v4 now for Kenki as he rotates back up the cash stairs. The plant going down from hot and cold as his member from Dark Zero prone watching the rotation and lighting up a dead body will be Kenki and Hyper will have him join that dead body that he was shooting at. It's a uh, good strike back there for Dark Zero as they overwhelm the objective. That body was definitely dead though. Yeah. 100% if that was the objective of killing that person, they double did it, okay? I think that was Nyx. Maybe that was not Nyx, but either way. I think it was Nyx's dead body, yeah. I think it was Sitting Nyx. in the doorway. Yeah, he was definitely gone, so... Still the round, Dark Zero. Uh, one one's our scoreline. They'll try again on CCTV cash. Um, can't go back to basement until round number four, of course. But yeah, I think a uh, much better round for Dark Zero, right? The droning was a little bit better. It wasn't perfect, right? When you saw Nyx walk in, he was very much caught off guard by the person um, playing behind the countertop 
Unfortunately, they didn't see that, but the rest of the team was there to collapse in, and Father's back, they lose the second round. Defenders so, good bounce back there for Dark Zero. And the Rome doing enough to stall there for uh, for Dark Zero's attack. The defensive uh, stance there for Father's back was, was good enough. Killed a lot of time. It uh, employed a lot of resources from Dark Zero to spread across the map and always be on their toes. Unfortunately for them, they, uh, they left the... The site a little soft there. No one watching for a wall run in, and then obviously the, the team kill not helping matters from the side of Father's totally. back. So maybe some uh, some crossed wires there on communication, just not knowing where people are going to to rotate to to try and hold down that push. Because it was looking like it was Father's back in, in well control there for a while, and unfortunately for them, they uh, they forgot about one one piece of the hold there, and it was just enough for Dark Zero to take advantage and take the round off of. No rotations in terms of operators for Dark Zero. They're sticking with the same three for three consecutive rounds now, which is also a little antithetical to what we're used to seeing mm -hmm. out of Dark Zero, constantly playing that carousel of rotating the ops and rotating the roles. But for right now, Dark Zero seem content with their stable five, and for Father's Back, they're also not making any rotations in terms of operators, making sure they have enough wall denial, making sure they have enough roam potential, and outside of that, it's just good to see Father's Back now still trying to take that roam, even if it's unsuccessful in a round, or at least playing their normal game, and like I said, even if it's unsuccessful, it's good to see them playing their play style, as Mint will take down Kenki for the opening pick. Good this time they're able to uh, get a little bit more of an entry this time, and you take down Kenki, who's been playing on the Legion. Uh, he's a player who, before we saw him on a lot of, like, unorthodox operators last time we saw him, right? Uh, Alibi was something he liked to pull it a whole lot. This time I think it's been going a little bit better for him um, with the operator choice being Legion. He's been pretty successful, right? That first round especially, we saw him get like three assists. Those goo mines were certainly a thorn in the foot of Dark Zero. They don't have to deal with that this time, or at least not as many. Those goo mines are not generating in the same way that they would be if he'd be alive the entire round. So, next picks up his drone, and now they're gonna look on into the bomb plate again. It's on the other side of this map, but it's still here on the top floor where they managed to entry. So again, Dark Zero pivoting now as they have the wall open, and Dustlebox will take down Hyper. Oh my, run out garage door. <laughs> All right. Looks like Dustlebox and Apple went for the run together, taking down that Claymore, and yeah, that's the rappel off the uh, off the uh, the CCTV wall taken care of. So equalizing now in man count as Dustlebox getting aggressive. Like like we've been saying, and like we've been asking for for Father's Back. The rotation now to construction. There is an Electro Claw being placed oh. on the construction wall, but it gets shot. Yep. I'm not sure where that got shot from, but hey, it's gone. The wall's going to get opened up now, and the man playing in behind the island is going to be pinned down. Looks like a Firebolt's going to come out here, but oh, returning fire is Kakatari, but it'll be cut down on the rotation, trying to flee the flames, and that's Nyx sending him to the grave. It's now in a 4v3 as they try to execute on the site. Dark Zero looking strong here for a cash push. Oh yes, two on four now as another one will fall. That's Apple on the ground. Mint just walking in. He's a little bit scared of his own teammate, but hey, doesn't shoot him, so that's a little bit more of an improvement from the other team. They're coming in now. Dustle box. The last player doesn't get anything. Dark zero take around number three. And again, it seems like they're very comfortable on this bomb site. Yeah, it looks like Dark Zero, honestly, they're attacking this much better than they did uh, attacking the basement and as well. Just a missed drone on the basement. Uh True, true. Basement round and also just an incredible individual play from Kakatari on the smoke. So for now, Father's Back having some struggles. And uh, for Dark Zero, I mean, you've got your quota already. Typically, it's a 4-2 split in the side of the defenders. You hit your two attacking rounds. You're feeling pretty confident about that. So we're not going to see the same kind of stubbornness from Father's Back as well that we saw in Consulate. They are going to go back down to a bomb site they've previously won, which is the basement. Church and Arsenal coming out and very similar operators to the ones they've been running downstairs uh, last time. I mean, they, yeah, they're not really changing their operators around, but I feel like you don't need to. You know, first of all, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Um, they've been performing very well with this lineup. Second of all, just the ops that they have available to them, right? With the bans that happen for the attackers, especially um, Ash and Maverick, both being taken off the board, you've got a lot of strong options for you, right? You need your heart destruction in terms of Habana and Thermite. You need that Capital because as Nyx has been showing us, it's very, very powerful. You really do need that Thatcher. It's the only person I can really see changing it up maybe would be Hyper. Um, but again, if he's comfortable with it, two and two and two right now. So he's not again popping off, but it needs to be, right? His teammates are doing the work. He's still performing just fine. Um, everything's working for DZ. I don't want him to change things here. I think for Father's Back as well, the lack of a uh, uh, lack of a maestro, a uh -huh. little, little concerning. Definitely. Um, they've been running it upstairs, but downstairs, they don't really have a whole lot of intel. They have lesion mines to so know when people walk in, but audio on LAN, not the greatest, because there's a lot of noise in here, and you still have noise-canceling headphones, but it's different than the setup you're used to at home, so you might not always hear that. Um, 
as well. We're going for another roaming smoke. I like it. Nick's on the mm -hmm. drone, though. He's going to cut him off inside of the bathroom. So Kekatari in danger. He's on top of the drone and doesn't see it. So Nick has him uh, well pinned right now. Shots coming in through the strip wall to pool table from Mint. And he's going to back off into the bathroom. So the roaming smoke play. Unsuccessful this time from the superior droning this time around for Dark Zero. Kekatari will fall in the hands of BC. Apple still upstairs inside of uh, CCTV, angling into rafters. Oh my, looks like he's been droned out as well as that impact hole is going to open up right behind him. Hyper blasting wide open the CCTV wall that was left unreinforced. BC collapsing from construction as well. And everyone's upstairs for Father's Back right now. I think it's going to be crucial for Dark Zero to be able to shut down the aggressive roamers, right? That really wasn't something they had to do in the last map. This map is definitely a, a much bigger red flag on their, uh, their to-do list. The first round, they didn't really know that. Since then, the adaptation that was immediate, right? They're dealing with these roamers and they're doing a great job of it so far. Ooh, Kenki. Nice shot there. Attack kind of like a one-tap onto bomb. BC's head, so we're able to trade out the Thatcher. That was the demise of your smoke, but honestly, if I'm an attacker, I take that trade all day and night. Naughton's planning. Nick's going to grab a kill onto BC on another one on the Dustal Box. The rotation eviscerated, and now it's Apple Attack trying to come down the main stairs as well. Mint will hit the deck once again, shooting the drone and giving away his location. It's a trade as Nick's will be fell down the hallway, but Mint once again prone at the doorstep awaiting the return of Apple, and that's Dark Zero with three straight attacking rounds now. Father's Back started strong off the single-handed individual prowess of Kakatari smoke play. They don't see that this time around, and now they're starting to lose grip of the game. One of the first times we've actually seen a big focus on the plants, right? In the last map and so far in this map, it doesn't seem like Father's Back or Dark Zero have been too preoccupied about it. They're willing to get their entry frags, whether they lose them or win them, and then they're willing to just sort of assault the bomb site. People are generally, at least the defenders, are generally down to challenge that before the plant goes down. Um, this time around, they were really trying to focus that plant, so a bit of a change, um, but it helps, right, when you can uh, isolate everybody else kind of upstairs. There's sort of an old saying that you don't really want to roam at all on Clubhouse. Um, that was more so true when uh, this map was older and before it got redone. These days, on this bomb site, you can do a little bit more roaming, it's a bit easier for your roamers to get back down, but it's still not an easiest thing ever. And Dark Zero really exploited that in the last round. I like the change for Dark Zero as well. Nick's getting off the Capitao, knowing he'll be attacking the basement again and taking the Jackal. If they're gonna encounter this much roam play, take the free location and take the uh, free intel that you're gonna get off of the Jackal footprints. Try and isolate some roamers even more. The droning, again, on point for, uh, for Dark Zero in that round. So like you said, it's a mistake they'll make once and never make again. Five Church left. Arsenal is where we end up, and I don't hate to go back here, right? I mean, it's the only thing that's worked so far. I wouldn't be upset either if they wanted to try Jim Bedroom out. Um, not going to talk about the bars, it's a terrible bomb site, but Jim Bedroom's not bad at all. Maybe should experiment it with either this round or uh, round number six. We'll see, though. That's uh, about three minutes away. They're going to go back down to the basement, and uh, well, that's a good start. Hot and cold. Going to be the first one to fall. Kenki finds that one. It's that roam. They're still committing to it, but they're falling back as soon as they get that frag. They know they got the thermite. Oh, yeah. That call came out in a microsecond. Thermite's dead. Everyone bailed. I only have the Habana now to open up hatches, and it's still doable, but the Electro Claws, and they're actually going to invest two sets of Xkyros? Yeah, two sets of Xkyros onto dirt. Wow, okay. That's a heavy investment there for Dark Zero to be able to crouch in could have just done one like crouch walkable through were they the placed point? maybe before hot and died possibly kenki's gonna collect another one onto hyper so there's constant rotations here for kenki will finally be cut down by mint on the trade pushing into the freezer door and they've only got one set of x kairos left the good news is that would be a man with impact grenades for the impact trick and looking up through the holes right beside the hatch will be kakatari Smoke trying to remove the head of the Habana to make sure they have no hard breach potential at all. The Jackal Track going to come out as well and probably dispel any flanking opportunities there for Apple as he was making his way up blue stairs. But as soon as being detected, he's going to rip back down and join his teammates on site. Mint not being able to open the kitchen hatch would be disastrous for Dark Zero. I mean, you've used two x now in the dirt tunnel. If this doesn't work, right, with Houghton dying, that would be the only thing you're able to hard breach open, and especially on a map like Clubhouse, that's just so devastating. So he's doing his due diligence, right? He's got a lot of drones around there. He's not going to plant that Xkaros until he's 100% sure he can get it open, but that might never end up being the case. He's going to use these breaching charges to get as many angles as he can, but here he will now try to open up the kitchen hatch. And still, Kakatari wants to stop it. There's the impact, but it didn't hit the first one nor the second. That hatch will get opened up. 
and now Mint is able to look down through it, and they'll be able to drop as well. That's sort of the key point for them. Mint holds the diffuser, so he's going to want to drop down and, oh, great shot. I know up myself for BC because he's in one. Nyx with another one. Mint with another one. Oh, boy, they're just raining in. Dark Zero, as soon as they drop, as soon as they get that hatch open, it doesn't even matter if they don't have a Thermite. They're still able to win these rounds. Beautiful execution there for Dark Zero. A little bit more of an old hat take. We see a lot of church takes these days. So it's kind of gone through a weird rotation on Clubhouse. It used to be year one, you open up church wall because you only had Thermite back then. There was no Havana. Right. You would just open up, uh, you'd pick a hatch, usually kitchen hatch, and then church wall and kind of push from there. Outside of that, though, as soon as Hibana came into play, then the Arsenal takes in year two really were at the forefront. And then it flipped back for year three, which was more traditional church takes with a Thermite opening up church wall. That one is, uh, I guess, going back to some older style of tacking uh, the basement and a good contingency plan there for Dark Zero. Losing the Thermite, that's not an easy thing to try and overcome, as well as losing Hyper. So, Defenders, protect I mean, your beautiful bombs bounce back there for Dark Zero in a situation that looked like it was all but lost in the first 30 seconds of the round. We go back again to Church Arsenal, and uh, I think the flexibility and defensive bomb sites for Father's Back has really been lacking across both maps. They really just like the basement sites for one reason or another, going to cafeteria all three times over on consulates, and now they've gone church four out of the uh, six rounds on clubhouse. Again, like I'd like to see that mix up happen. This is a, ma a bomb or a map, excuse me, where you could try CCTV again. They filled it twice. I don't love that idea, but you know, give Jim Bedroom a shot. This isn't working, right? You won this bomb site once because you got an early pick on a crucial operator, and then you got that again, and it still didn't work, right? Um, getting hot in is pretty much as good as it's gonna get early on for Father's Back. So if you couldn't turn that into a round one on this bomb site, I'm just not all that hopeful that you're gonna be able to do it on your fourth attempt. Well, it looks like we've only got one roamer this time from Father's Back. I have no idea who that is, because that silhouette is in Narnia, but it looks like he's over by CCTV. It's Kenki now. Thank you. Of course, heading back and forth between construction and cash. So the roaming legion that had the two opening picks last round for Father's Back, and honestly it set Father's Back up to be in a beautiful position. Breaching charge coming out under the jacuzzi wall once again. It looks like Kenki is none the wiser. He's gonna blow it wide open and immediately hop on the drone, try and walk him down. Nyx is still gonna be up with the jackal tracks as well. Looks like he's being targeted now from the logistics hatch. And there comes the jackal track. They're not gonna know about Apple though. That's a sneaky rotation uh -oh. from Father's Back. And Mintho is gonna take down Kakatari as he walks in the kitchen. Where the hell was he? Maybe downstairs to the floorboards? I hope he wasn't roaming. He was downstairs. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, that's a really tough one to lose. You can tell that uh, Kagadari, this wasn't a round where he was getting aggressive. Right? It's yeah. harder to put that on him. Um, maybe should have been a little bit more aware of the players above him, but still, that's a very tough one to lose. That's a smoke off the board. Very crucial operator. You're going to miss it if your father's back. Good news for father's back, though, is even though they've lost a smoke, they're still screwing with Dark Zero's mentality right now in terms of this roam. So now it's Apple who's going to get Jackal pinged out and he'll have to rotate back, but now that opens up Kenki to rotate if he wants to go for a uh, an aggressive stance towards any of these entry points or stairwells. Mint's going to collect another one, though, onto Kenki as I say that. They're trying to impact trick. They were successful the first time on the impact trick, but the second time does not remove enough X Kairos pellets. So the hatch gets opened up and now Dark Zero in full control. A 5v3 looking to execute. Make that almost a 5v2. I was ready to make the call and everything, but B Sun escapes on about 35 HP and he's going to retreat to the hallway. Apple taking significant damage. Shots onto the feet. Not going to land. BC to take down Apple and everyone dying from up top now. Hello, Nyx finds somebody as he bolts on down. Was definitely an opportunity for that player, but Dustal wasn't able to aggress at the correct time, and they'll leave it all on a B-Sun to try to get something. He gets the first one, Nyx, he'll need the ace, won't get anything after that. Round number six goes Dark Zero. It's a 5-1 split for the attackers on Clubhouse. That's one of the scariest sentences I've ever said. It's certainly worrisome here for Father's Back as they look like they're just being outpaced in every step and foray of the game right now for, uh, for Dark Zero. Like they're beginning to rally. Surprising. Yeah. Dominant. Yeah. Looking good. Totally. Um, Dark Zero, I think for them coming into this match, it's uh, it's not their hardest competition, right? It's a map where if your other team's looking at Dark Zero in this tournament, uh, you're thinking, okay, well, how well have these guys adjusted after losing in Raleigh? How you know much are they on the game? Is this going to upset them? Is this going to be a, uh, a map or a series that they end up losing that Attackers they struggle with? Clearly, it seems like that has not been the case. Perhaps um, there's some flaws in terms of their roaming. Perhaps there's some flaws in terms of their uh, cafeteria defenses on consulate. 
if you're an enemy team, you can look at that. But otherwise, it's been very strong stuff coming from Dark Zero. I'd be scared if I was Evil Geniuses or whatever BYOC team ends up in this group. Dark Zero looking good. Like you said, it, it's father's back, right? Yeah. It You got to kind of scale your expectations based on the competition. Looks like BC is going to be going for a bit of a Roman strip on the pulse. I like it. Ooh, okay. No, he's just checking for drones. Okay. Oh, he's checking for drones so he can go for a spawn peak. I like this even more, BC. Oh, no, you're breaking my heart now, Brandon. Please go back. Please make fireworks happen. For Father's Back starting on the attack here, you kind of got to replicate exactly what Dark Zero just did to you, which is not the easiest of tasks. Like you said, that was one of the scariest sentences you've ever said, and uh, for good reason. It's it's Clubhouse. Things are shifting more towards the middle now that teams have had uh, a lot more practice on it, and we talked about the attacking bands leaning in the favor of the attackers, not getting rid of crucial operators. You need to lock down portions of the map or roam clear. It's a... Uh, it's a good start for Dark Zero, and Father's Back are going to have to replicate it. They're not making too many uh, roll swaps either. Almost identical operators that they were bringing on the attack inside a consulate. So for Father's Back, I just want to see them get engaged and get moving on the round like they were on the defense here in comparison to their consulate game. For sure, and one big operator standing out to me is the Pulse. I think it's a great pick from Dark Zero. Not only can he sit down in the basement and gain a lot of information for his teammates on who might be above and who might be trying to push in, but the fact that they're both bald is definitely going to make his guns do more damage. So BC, I love that pickup by him. I hate you so much. <laughs> There's no way you actually just said that. <laughs> but we're a minute in and Father's back. Haven't been able to deal with the Pulse yet, so all I'm saying, maybe start shaving your heads, players. Oh boy! All right, welcome to Corn Pop, everyone. Jesse, uh, Jesse, check everyone. Having a good first cast of a miner. He'll be here all week. <laughs> Rotations now for Father's Back is they're still struggling to open up hatches. Honestly, there's nothing hey, impeding the process. Dustal Box will start things off. Onto the blue hatch with a thermite charge, waiting for Beeson to get involved as well as he's on drones from the pool table. So. Takes a little while, just making sure that everything's clear, making sure that they don't have anyone hiding in a hole like they were doing on their defenses. So, Dark Zero here have been assessed. They've been thrown out by Father's Back. Now the hatches will begin to open up, but you're running low on time already if you're Father's Back for this execute. They've already used both exothermic charges on hatches. So, unless they just want to open up feet holes of the Excairos on the church wall, this might be an arsenal take. Father's back cast their lure down the hatches. They're looking to find their second round here, but they're going to need to get into an engagement for that to happen. Kakatari will drop down into Oil Pit, and he's obviously not able to see these outlines, but they are outlines behind objects for him to try to shoot at. That's going to be Hyper inside of Utility Room, probably the first person he'll come in engagement with, but it's Mint, the first one with the C4 to take down Kenki. So an initial engagement doesn't go in the way of Father's back, and there's another C4. You're two for two. BC known for his throwables. That one hits perfectly. Nyx doesn't need a C4. He's just going to use his gun. He gets a headshot. Mint with another one. Apple actually winning his engagement, but again, we've seen a player from Father's back in this position twice now. You're inside of Oil Pit. You need to get an ace both times to get one frag and die. So Father's back now pushed to the brink of being sent down to the loser's portion of their bracket in their group, and we'll have to wait and see what EG does with the BYOC team whenever that happens. Yes. And of course, that'll be streamed uh, on one of the community caster channels. Up next is Wreck versus Chaos, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. So uh, Darkshire looking to put this one away without a lot of sweat being broken here. And uh, Nyx on a Frost immediately, and then gonna go over to Maestro. Go Let's back to the Frost. Go back to the Frost. Do it. Please do it. Jim Bedroom as well, so not looking to demonstrate their CCTV. He's going to go to the castle. That is so up. bland. Right? Give me the frost. If we yell loud enough, he'll hear us, and maybe he'll, he'll switch. Maybe. I won't do that to the people at home, though. No, no, we would we would break some eardrums. Yeah. Jim Bedroom defense. This is the first time through, uh, through seven completed rounds into round eight that we're going to see this, which is... A little odd, but given that the attacking side was winning so often in the first split, which is also odd. Yeah. It's understandable that we never saw this site. I guess. Like you were saying, though, maybe you would have liked to see Father's Back give it a shot just because they were gaining no traction downstairs, and their CCTV hold also didn't last uh, all that well. So for Dark Circle on their gym bedroom implementation, this looks pretty basic, pretty default. Just castling off the gym door and gym window. So the third one's going on construction window. Okay. For Dark Zero, I would not be surprised if this bomb site is purely being chosen because they don't want to give away uh, something on CCTV cash, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's only like one round on one bomb site, but any little thing you can hide, I mean, you're going to want to. Um, 
because every other team, you know, Evil Geniuses and whoever you meet in bracket, should you make it there, they're going to be watching that, and uh, they're going to be looking for what you might be doing on every single bomb site. If you don't have to give that up, well, you're not going to. A couple of Claymores being set up now for Father's Back, so they keep the same operator lineup from last time. Checking for the same peak. Seems like everyone in this game right now is very worried about a dirt peak. No one's, no one's actually trying to run it, but, oh well, everyone's still... Scared of it. B-Sun's going to walk all the way over, pre-fire the wall just to make sure there's no one deep inside of the dirt tunnel. And now the execute onto the jacuzzi wall will come out. The EMP beams two EMPs being sent out. There's no Kaid on the board for Dark Zero. But was, they don't know that. The clock that there was no castle in reveal phase and the six picked onto one. But nonetheless, just being safe, making sure there's nothing happening. And now you've got a four-man stack outside a jacuzzi wall for Father's back here. And Swapping mags. This is uh, this is a little this is a little scary here for Father's Back. This might be a nitro cell heaven for BC, who doesn't have one anymore. There's no nitro cells for Dark Zero. Never mind. If you don't know how to defend a bomb site, I think it's located. not a great sign that you know how to attack it. We'll see. Obviously, as they come in through here, they could lose it, or they could do very well. They could know exactly what they're doing. But in terms of uh, how they've been performing and how they've not chosen to go to this one at all on defense doesn't make it super helpful. Getting that wall open is huge though. I mean, a gas canister expended at like a minute 40 is not terrible, um, but it's all right for the attackers too. And then getting that wall open, I think that's pretty nice. I'm a little bit worried that there's no presence on gym window though. Mint has freedom behind two castle barricades, one of his window and one of his door. Okay, there goes the door one. He's still got his window though. And he's got freedom to play inside a gym unimpeded right now. And that's a... That's a nice position to be able to play as a smoke as well. A second Toxic Babel coming onto the wall. Ooh, early to be dumping all the smokes, but you gotta try and stall out this progression. And you've got three people stacked on the Jacuzzi balcony. You're slowing down a lot of the push by using those smokes, even if it is a little earlier than usual. Apple, looking for somebody who might be in again. We're just past that minute mark, and nobody has gone down just yet. Kakatari might be looking to be the first one, though. Houghton in a very good position. It's a Claymore from Apple, though. Hyper, a little too aggressive this time. Now Houghton will go off, and he'll get his first kill. He saw a second person, but I know he's not able to hit that shot yet. Mince looking for a shotgun kill, but only finds the barrel the wrong end. A double kill for Kakatari gives it a four on two, and it's just Nixon BC trying to claw this round back and win them the game. Oh, it's taken slowly. Side of cash. Again, this has been a problem for Father's Back, not being able to find people who creep in behind you. Kenki not looking the right way, and Nix will punish him. Apple going for the plant, though. This is big. BC getting another kill, equalizing, but that plant still hasn't been disrupted. Doesn't look like it will. Nix is looking for it, but oh, it just runs on in. Maybe a little bit too aggressive. Took some damage behind the wall. BC looking to be able to find this frag. Still 2 on 2. You've still got a player outside as well. That's a big one. There's BC finishing off the damage from the impact grenade. It's only going to be on Kekatari to stop this from being disabled. Looking for these kills. Will it get disabled? That's the big thing that they need to be focused on for DZ. There goes BC starting with it, and Nyx will shut down the player who goes to stop it. Kekatari gets nothing. They're going to drop on down very happily, winning that match 7-1.